flexible, bendy bugs and spiders and dragonflies on a $99 printer with flexible TPU? This is madness! No, it's not madness, it's 3D print farm. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Today I am super excited to share with you how I printed flexible TPU on a $99 printer. This $99 printer, it weighs three pounds. It is the Easy 3D. Not Easy 3D, but Easy 3D. Easy 3D printer. Now, first and foremost, I want to give full credit to Mr. Chuck Hellebuck. He has a channel over on YouTube by the name of Chep, C-H-E-P. I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description below. Not too long ago, he actually reviewed this printer. And it actually didn't print PLA real good, but you know what? He noted that it printed flexible TPU fantastically. Check out these prints. Okay, is that not crazy stuff? I mean, a $99 printer that prints flexible TPU. Again, it doesn't do a really super job of printing regular PLA, but for 99, but for 99 bucks, flexible TPU. Now, there's a few things that you're gonna have to do to set this printer up, and it's really easy. I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. One of the first things you'll want to do is remove the build plate. Mine was super loose. And again, this is just a thick plastic build plate. So here are the four screws. And my build plate was really uh, kind of wonky, so I needed to tighten up these 12 screws right here. And all I'd used was the included uh, Phillips head screwdriver. What you'll also want to do is check the belt tightness. If you squeeze it together, you should have some tension. My belt was a little loose. So what I wanted to do is these two screws right here in the middle. One is a pivot point and the other actually helps adjust the belt. Here it is on the bottom here. Uh, once you loosen one, you can twist this piece of plastic. The next is the bed here. You'll need to use some binder clips on the bed. As you can see here with the binder clips, when you try to move the, the bed around, it's a magnetic bed, it holds really well with the binder clips. Well, without the binder clips, check this out the magnetic surface does not stick real well so what happens is is this magnetic surface is really really loose so you can see is it shaking around so you can imagine if you have a really tall print when this thing starts to uh, jitter around especially with the x-axis moving back and forth you're going to have some issues with the bed shaking on you like this 
The next thing I did was take some white lithium grease. This is Lucas. I purchased this on Amazon. Uh, you'll want to uh, put a light, and I mean light layer of grease on the, the Z-axis, one over here on the, on the Y, and also on the X, not right here. Okay, just you'll want it over here on the X axis, Y axis, just a light, thin, thin coating X, Y, and the Z axis on the smooth rods. The next is loading the filament. So when you press this button, you'll see the filament, uh, the plus sign flashing. And now you'll see it flashing more steadily. When it flashes steadily, it's ready to load the filament. The filament will get, will grab, since it is a direct drive, uh, extruder and as you can see the filament starts coming out I think I had it set around 210 degrees like so and now as uh, since the hot end is heated I wanted to go in and level this bed again I screwed this um, bed down when I homed the printer and that was just hitting the home button and I'm making adjustments just like any 3D FDM printer, you need to adjust four points on the bed, and when you pull your paper out, you want just a slight drag, but you don't want it stuck, you just want a slight drag so your filament will stick properly. Again, you'll need to do this uh, a couple times. I think I, I redid it about four times, or actually three times around each side, just to make sure that it's, it is level. Again, it is kind of a pain, but you know how it is when you have FDM 3D printers that you have to level this way. It's just the way you do it. Use a little bit of copier paper and uh, just get that slight drag and then hit each corner. And then uh, you should be good to go to actually get your print started. After that, you're ready to go. Uh, put your print on the SD card, hit the play button or the triangle button and you're off to the races. Okay, last but not least is the slicer software. Super easy to use. I'm going to take the next five minutes or so to show you how to use the slicer software. Again, you can use Simplify 3D or Cura, but I think this stuff's kind of cool. I think you're going to like it. What I really like about this printer is the included slicer software. Now, you can use Cura. You can use Simplify 3D. Uh, it really doesn't matter. You can use any, any, any of the slicer software that's out there that uh, works with this printer. First thing you'll want to do is go up here and if you see the Chinese characters, you'll click the drop down, change it to English, and you'll want to, you'll see all these different printers here uh, that Easy3 uh, produces. Uh, you're going to get the X1, X2, X1 slash X2, which the one I'm using is the, is the X1 here. You'll want to choose PLA, and now you see that you're in the... Um, the slicer software and what I'm doing now is I'm just holding in my um, the I'm holding in the right mouse button and as I'm moving my mouse around I am moving everything around here and you see the buttons up here they're super super simple the very first one up here is a load button so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna grab the let's go ahead and grab the frog here so I'm gonna grab the frog there's the frog again I'm holding my right mouse button in and I'm just kind of rotating this dude around. What's really cool is if you want to look at this uh, frog and from different aspects, you click the top button here, front, flank. Oh, we can reset the camera again. And again, you can just kind of rotate this dude around in here. There's a couple of things that you'll want to do prior to printing this in TPU. Now, if you'll go over here and click this button, you'll see the, this is the slicer button. You can either choose one key or custom. What you'll want to do is you'll want to select custom. And you'll see a lot of these of the settings here that are similar to Cura or Simplify 3D. I'm in the custom setting. I want to leave everything alone until I get down here to support type. The support, the normal support type for this, it's set up for PLA and it's set up for a raft, and that is because they want you know, maximum adhesion on the build plate because the build plate is not heated and it, they really want the prints to stick. And I think that's some of the reasons why the, well, that and not having a cooling fan is some of the reasons why PLA does not print that well. But for some reason, 
uh, flexible TPU plant prints awesome. So I'm going to click the support type from everywhere to none and then I'm going to select skirt. And basically that is just going to put a skirt around the print. I like to start out with a skirt because it kind of helps extrude some of the, the plastic out before it starts the main print. Next thing you'll want to change is your nozzle temperature. To me, this, this temperature is too low. So uh, for the TPU that I'm using, I'm gonna use 210 degrees. And then the very last thing uh, you'll want to do is under retraction, where you see allow roll allowed rollback, you'll want to deselect that so there will be no retraction. Usually when you're printing TPU and on any 3D printer, especially those with the Bowden setup, uh, by allowing retraction, you're re asking for problems. Uh, so I'm going to deselect that. When I'm when all that is completed, I click start slicing, and as you can see, this works pretty quick and you'll see it kind of builds up the the print you can go over here to the slider and you can kind of see how everything is kind of laid out which is kind of nice it tells you this frog's going to print in 44 minutes it's going to take 2.47 meters of filament another thing i probably forgot to mention up here uh, another thing i forgot to mention up here was the uh, the fill density this is the percentage of infill, so as you see, the, um, the honeycomb, uh, well not honeycomb, but you see the, um, uh, you see the structure here on the frog, uh, all this build up. I'm using my scroll wheel here on my mouse to zoom in, but the, the infill structure, the fill density is 15%, so, and you can adjust this, you know, and that, this, this is, it'll depend on how squishy you want the actual object. So when you're finished with this, what you'll want to do is click the um, either save data or save to SD. If your SD card is in your PC, it will automatically save this frog to the SD card. But now I'm just going to save the data here. It saves it as the file type as a G code file. Remember, uh, on this particular printer, it on whatever SD card, whatever micro SD card you put into the printer, it's going to print that particular item. So remember to only have one item, only one G set of G code files or one, one G code file on the SD card at a time. So let's say for instance, I wanted to print something else, or let's say that I you know completely uh, screwed this up and I wanted to reset it. So I'm going to reset everything. I'm going to close this out. And how you get rid of this is you have to quit your slice. So there's a button here that says quit slice. I clicked quit slice and I'm back to normal. So now I can actually select the model. And what's cool about this is when I select it, it turns kind of this shade of purple. I can rotate the model around by grabbing it and I can turn it around here. So I reset my frog here. Uh, another thing you can do is you can, you, can, um, you can scale your object up. You can make it as large as you want. You can see when it turns red, that means that it's too large for the build plate. Will not print, so I need to scale it down. You can move, move it around. Uh, the floor button is kind of cool. What it is, the mouse. It, what you do is the you click the the selected surface as the bottom surface of the model. It's kind of hard to do on this frog, but if you had a let's say a cube, you could select different sides of the cube and tell it uh, that's the item that you wanted to be used as the floor of the object. So you, how you get rid of the item is you simply click the item and click the delete key or the trash can key and you get rid of it. So again, this software is super easy to use. Just make sure when you go into print is select your custom, uh, select custom and you're able to make change those parameters. And again, on the included micro SD card is all, everything is, and on the included micro SD card is everything you need to, um, uh, to print with this little printer, which I think is pretty stinking cool. Since it does have a direct drive 
extruder on here, it prints flexible filament like nobody's business. I mean, you know, not only can you print kids toys with this, but I've printed washers for my water hose. I've printed little gaskets for one of my lasers, a focusing knob for one of my lasers on this thing. I mean, the bed is not real big, but I mean, come on. Flexible TPU for 99 bucks. I'm gonna put links in the description below on how you can purchase one of these easy three $99 printers Links in the description below. Hey guys, thanks again for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'd love to hear back from you. And don't forget to hit the link below to enter the contest to win a brand new Elego Mars 3D resin printer that I'm going to be giving away at the end of this month. It's a random drawing. Go down, enter to win. But please, US residents only. Again, thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. I'm not gonna jump in this pool because it's kind of mild today. Yeah, it's, it's kind of mild today. No, it's not as hot. Don't forget to enter the contest to win the Elegoo Mars. Don't forget to win. And don't forget to enter the contest for the Elegoo Mars resin printer that I'm going to be giving at the... And don't forget to... Thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm again. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed yourself. I know I did. Don't forget, there's about another... There's about another... Hey guys, thanks for Jin. Thanks for Jin. Virgin. Creepy creatures. Oh.